dear men, stop working out. Physical fitness creates a cycle of toxic masculinity that needs to be eradicated. Oh my god, my bad. Yeah, I shouldn't have listened to my cardiologist. Yeah, he, he definitely told me to lose a couple pounds so that I wouldn't have another heart attack. But yes, my bad for working out. I didn't know that my working out harmed you in any capacity and somehow makes masculinity toxic, whatever that means. But hey, this is a really smart article because now you can attack men for their fundamental identity so that they can look exactly like you, round and disgusting. <laughs> guys look at a pretty picture of me and my friend really <laughs> what it's just a little much that's all what is that supposed to mean i mean we get that you're skinny you don't have to post pics reminding chubby girls that they're chubby what are you serious if you are that offended by it first unfollow me and second get some help this is the most ridiculous stuff i've ever heard we haven't talked since January, and this is what makes you text me? Wow. <laughs> okay, Nicole, this is thin privilege in a nutshell. I'm not quote unquote offended by it, but it makes me feel like crap. You're basically saying, look at me and how well I met the beauty standards. Like, that's not helping anyone. Just be aware of the privilege, that's all, not trying to fight. You clearly are, because let's get real here. You weren't quote unquote offended. You're right, you weren't offended. You're just jealous. Your motives to contact this person was to simply put her down for being pretty. You can't fathom somebody just not looking like yourself, so instead of actually changing your body for the better, and maybe even lengthening your lifespan, you'd rather go out of your way to tear somebody else down. If this conversation was truly about thin privilege and all of the quote-unquote politics behind it, you would have started the conversation with it, but instead you started with, really, lol? It's clear that you're just upset that you'll never look like these two women. And that is really sad. I wish that wasn't the case. I would love everybody to be beautiful. But hey, if you're not going to do anything to change your body, why should I and anybody else go out of our way to give you any sort of respect? International weight loss has a 95-98% to 98 failure rate. Do we even have to confirm that to be true? That statistic is so ridiculous because that means all of us. Everybody who watches these videos and tells me in the, the comments and in my Instagram and on Twitter about losing multiple pounds, you guys are rare. Like, you, you guys are more rare than rainbow rare Pokemon cards. Your success is more rare than you digging up a hole and finding platinum. And I could keep going. There's so many things that you, by simply losing weight and keeping that weight off with nothing but consistency and constitution are more rare than if you were to take this statistic to be true. And clearly it isn't. So what did we learn here? Don't make up fake statistics to bolster fake ideologies. Okay, so what you're about to hear is a response to this article by Forbes talking about how you shouldn't do your own research when it comes to science, you know? Let the scientists do the science pretty reasonable stuff when it comes to important things. You don't want to get hurt trying to make discoveries on your own when you don't understand what you're doing. But of course, this is r slash fat logic, and you already know, a fat person got a problem with not being able to make up science on a dime. How do we respond to an article like this? I know this article is aimed at corona conspiracists and other science deniers. Ah, so you're included in that bunch too. A lot of you guys are science deniers. But, I'm a health at every size activist. I'm not a scientist, but I've learned how to read scientific studies and how to look for double-blind studies from reputable peer-reviewed journals. But the majority of doctors still seem to recommend weight loss. Does that make me a conspiracist? I know there are plenty of studies to support my, or our, point of view, but when the majority of doctors still sit on the wrong side of science, how can we claim to know better? Without sounding like crazies. All right, my man Cornflake got the spirit. <laughs> he a little confused, but he got the spirit. Wow, she actually is really close to the epiphany that almost all of us have encountered and accepted. She is so close to realizing that she has a conclusion and is trying to find evidence for it. Her conclusion being that weight loss is in healthcare and she's trying to find evidence for it. It's what anti-vaxxers do all the time. 
you're not going to be able to do it that way you start with the evidence and then you draw conclusions that's why for every one health at every size medical paper there's 200 papers debunking it but her confirmation bias and cognitive dissonance isn't letting her realize that she now thinks that she's a conspiracist with the actual information and that she actually knows what's going on in reality she's trying to answer a question backwards to be honest, I don't think she'll ever have that epiphany. I don't think she'll ever wake up and realize that she's horrifyingly wrong because now she's thinking that she's a conspiracist. And that means she is way gone at this point, far gone. But it's just sad to see somebody so close to the truth. Oh, hi, Belly Rolls. Thank you for breaking down all my yummy food so I can get that lovely nutrition and get on with my day. You're amazing. No, belly rolls have no function in digestion, so that doesn't make any sense. And two, belly rolls are a sign of unhealthy living. Oh my god! What? That's crazy! No skinny people can have belly rolls too! That's true. So you may be wondering, why did I say it's unhealthy living? Because you can do so much more. Now here's a little nugget, a little secret that I think is going to benefit a lot of you guys out there who are losing weight and you're like, why do I still have belly rolls? Here's why. You don't have abs. That's it. It's that simple. For guys, it's extremely simple. Uh, just get a six pack and you'll never see belly rolls ever again. For women, I don't know if that's necessarily true for you guys. I think you guys retain a little bit more fat than dudes, so it might be a little bit more difficult for you to lose that weight right on your stomach. But if you work hard enough, I've seen women do it. You can definitely lose the belly rolls as a skinny person. Just replace them with abs. And if you want to do that quickly, just do leg lifts and sit-ups and you'll have abs forever. Trust me. And I'll say again, if you're a guy and you're like chilling at your desk chair right now watching this video, you're like, man, I got belly rolls. Trust me, just sit-ups and it'll, they'll magically vanish. The space that they take up on the front of your stomach will be replaced with abs. And you'll have those abs forever. And what will happen is that when you sit down, you'll no longer have belly rolls. You'll just have puppy squares. You know, relaxed ab squares. That's it. And maybe that's just my experience, but I've never had belly rolls. I've only just had puppy abs when I sit down. But back to the post, I don't think that they're talking about belly rolls the way that I and we are in the concept of still having belly rolls even after major body, you know, metamorphosis. They're talking about belly rolls when they haven't even started the gym process. And no, that's not a good thing. So yeah, get rid of them and stop being degenerate. Lose weight and be better. Loving your body because it's thin is not loving your body. Oh, all right, so I guess celebrating your body because it's obese, big, and takes up space, obnoxious, and against social norms is also not loving your body, right? I mean, I'm just only using your logic. Untrue. <laughs> I diet and work out, and I'm healthy, but I'm still obese. I put a lot of time and energy into it as well. Your lie got two likes, and I wouldn't be surprised that you used your two other alt accounts to like this comment to probably get some, you know, traction going. Seriously, who types this stuff out thinking that they're going to fool anyone? Are they fooling themselves? I hope you're not trying to delude yourself into thinking that you're healthy, because you're not. If anything, you're describing yourself as a walking contradiction. You can't be obese and healthy. That's not how that works. You can't be 420 pounds, 5 feet tall, and healthy. That's impossible. You you can't do it. So all I see in this comment is cope. All I see is delusion. All I see is someone not being honest with themselves, and that's really sad. I mean, I would love to clown on you a little bit more, but at this point, it's almost depressing to see somebody lie this blatantly about their lifestyle and their living situation. Because it's easier for you to lie and tell mistruths and delude yourself into thinking that you're in a better position than you are now instead of actually working hard to be in such a position. Why are you living in a fantasy? You need help. You need a friend who's going to encourage you to lose weight. Because if not, I have a feeling that you're going to just be angry. You're just going to be sad for the rest of your life and you're not going to know why. Thin privilege is considering the isolation, rejection, and humiliation of fat people to be first world problems. Bitch, I want to see you try to get fat in Ethiopia. Please, I want to see you try. Of course it's a first world problem. You live in the western world. We have nothing but excess here. There's nothing but opportunities to consume everything, not just food. You live in a very, very prosperous society that gives you the freedom to ruin your body. So I'll reiterate my challenge. Please, I want to see you try to get fat in Ethiopia. I want to see you try. Having fat on your tummy is good. Actually, not just normal, not just natural, it's good. Sick to death of flat stomachs being seen as the universal ideal when it's not even achievable or healthy for most people. Literally, if your tummy sticks out, that's a good thing. Oh, and yeah, I know that my claim is really ridiculous and then essentially I'm saying that beer bellies and obese guts are healthy, but 
fat phobes, I will block you without hesitation. So don't even try interacting with me and like, you know, having a debate with me because I'm not trying to have a debate. I'm just trying to feel good about my degeneracy. The strawberry dress does not look good on skinny white women. Mmm. Give me more of that just, mmm, that, that casual racism. This is a thing for us fat people and bi POC. What the, what is that? Bi, bisexual POC? Biracial POC? I don't know what that is. What, what? I don't understand these terms, man. I don't get it. Where do these terms come from? New approach to self-care. Talk to myself the same way I talk to dogs. Hey, sweet girl, look at that beautiful belly. You're so clever, want a treat? You wish someone would talk to you like this. And that's kind of the sad thing. You wish someone would treat you the same way you treat your dog, but in reality, you live in a society that expects you to be better. I get that you want comfort and care, but really no one's willing to afford you that, and I'm just being blunt. People expect you to be the best you can be, and that means losing weight and lengthening your life. No one's going to treat you like a dog because you're a human, and we expect humans to be a little bit more able than dogs. I'm trying to be healthy, and mainstream talk means I'm trying to cut out all calories, which in fact is actually not healthy since you're depriving yourself of necessary nutrients and creating a- I'm tired of hearing it. I'm tired of hearing it. I just fell on my chair. I'm tired of hearing it. It's not depriving yourself of necessary nutrients. It isn't. It's just calorie counting. It means maybe not eat 2,000 calories today. Let's shave that down to maybe 1,500 or maybe 1,000. That's what that is. You're not losing nutrients. You're still eating, but just not as much. What you mean? I've always seen Insta posts with his and hers portions. Women always have less on their plate, and I find it ridiculous how much we're told to eat based on our gender. I understand vitamins and supplements for men's and women's health, but for the amount of food, it's just coming from a bigoted mindset. I have truly never heard of this quote-unquote bigotry before. What I do know is that guys eat more food than women. On average, we have larger appetites than women, so to assume that a guy has a bigger plate than his female counterpart isn't bigotry. And you're mad because the world isn't assuming that you're eating as much as a man, so... I I don't understand the oppression in this. If this is oppression, then this is some of the strangest. So all the skinny girls whining about not being able to find clothes for themselves, have you ever considered, you know, getting fat? No, actually. You completely misinterpreted that entire situation. Most skinny women who have trouble finding clothes are trying to find clothes that fit their style. A very different situation than what you encounter. You see, you being fat and gross, you have trouble just finding clothes in general. I've been enjoying seeing people gain weight this season. We are so much more interesting when we embrace our curves instead of fight for thinness. I hope this trend continues as we embrace differences in new ways. Different is good, different is beautiful. You know, when I read stuff like this, it just, it makes me almost not want to even debate or go out of my way to create videos against these people. These people are malicious. They wanna see you fail. They wanna see you get sick and die like they will. Like I said before, they can't fathom helping themselves, so they wanna tear down the world, and they're glad that everybody's trapped inside, and as a result, eating a lot more. These people want you to be as sad and deplorable as them. Don't forget that. Don't let them fool you into thinking that this is somehow positive or progressive. They want to see you fail. And that simple reality is the reason why I'll make these videos forever. I'll go out of my way to produce this content, not only because it's positive for a bunch of people who are watching it and losing weight and becoming gods, but this video series is also supposed to be a catalog of how society views you. I'm going to say it because no one else will. I have no issues in saying that your body is deplorable, your ideology is reprehensible, and Western society will never accept you. Our cultural values are incongruent with your body. That's the truth. And the fact that you would wish unhealthy things on others, you would wish death on others, because that's what obesity will bring you, quick and swift death, is more than enough encouragement for me to keep this series going. Fat folks aren't sick because of adipose tissue. We all get sick because we're all mortal. What? <laughs> it's like, what? Does, that doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make sense. You do get that. Because adipose tissue, or excess adipose tissue, comes as a result of obesity. Nobody else experiences that. Except obese people. The influencer always defends it as a wellness journey, and says this is really about their health. 
If it were really about health, why continue to conflate the false notion that smaller equals healthier? This perpetuates the classic trope that fat people must gorge themselves all day. What else is it if it isn't a trope? What else are you doing? If you're not overeating, then where did the fatness come from? It didn't fall from the sky. Oh my god, then they get upset that they're being bullied by body positive community for taking care of their health. Uh, no. They're upset because you're perpetuating the idea that all fat people stuff themselves with is fries all day and never move their bodies. So this person made the grand mistake of posting a picture about their quote unquote wellness journey, you know, sharing pictures of their fitness and how much weight loss they've had, and that bothers you because you look into the image and speculate about the hidden meaning of the entire image when in reality it's just someone sharing their wellness journey. Nothing more, nothing less. Yet you guys find it to be a threat just because somebody looks good on a picture or just somebody is doing the one thing that you can't. I know I sound like a broken record, but these people are upset for nothing. Controversial opinion. You're not better than fat people, even really fat people, even fat people who don't put a lot of effort and time into their appearance, even fat people who wear clothes you think are unflattering. Your appearance literally does not make you better than a fat person. You are not more fun to hang out with because you're not fat. You're not funnier, smarter, or more interesting by virtue of not being fat. You're not harder working, and you don't have more self-control. You don't have your life more together. Ah, see, that's where you're wrong. I am better than you. Mostly because through your actions of being obese, you've lowered the bar to just being able to not overeat. That's how low the bar is now, because of your choices. So by virtue of being able to control my eating habits, and being able to work out, and control my life and not die at 50, I am better than you. Nutrition is not black and white. We can't divide food into good or bad. We can't divide food into healthy or unhealthy. Sure, Jan. Yeah, right, uh, sure. I guess, you know, according to this person on Instagram, there's no such thing as a bad food. So to all those out there who have been working hard to lose weight, you know, you can just stop now. You can just stop because all food is good. Yep, just eat an entire spoonful of peanut butter every 10 minutes and I hope your life is better because of it because there's no bad food right I, I there's, just, there's no bad food speaking of peanut butter we have this lie versus truth can only have one tablespoon of peanut butter at a time anymore it's too many calories the truth measuring spoons don't know your life slather what you want do you realize how calorie packed peanut butter is. Seriously, I'm encouraging you guys to search up how many calories are in one teaspoon of peanut butter, and you'll wonder how during phys ed and health class people said peanut butter is healthy for you. I mean, to an extent it is, but whoo, no wonder people are having heart attacks now. Are you sure that's not actually too little? Can't imagine not eating anything for over three hours without starving. Yes, three meals and two snacks is minimum. Addiction, everybody. Look at that, there you go, right there. Two, two comments and you already know what sizes these people are. I've shared this before, but I'll just reiterate again. Three meals is healthy, yes, absolutely. And maybe an additional snack if you're really hungry. But eating within three hour intervals is extremely worrying. That's not good. Personally, it's worrying to me because I only ever eat once or twice a day. A day. And this person can't go three hours without another meal. That's nuts. Fat bodies are not fat bodies because something is wrong. Fat bodies are fat bodies because that's how they're meant to be. When is the last time you asked a thin person why they were thin? Blame them for their thinness? That's actually a funny question because you guys do that all the time. You talk about thin bodies all the time and say that they're the result of not genetics like you guys, you know, the easy out. No, no, you blame our thinness on obsession over food and the acceptance of quote unquote diet culture and beauty culture. That's what you guys blame our thinness on. And the fact that your body is supposed to be designed to be fat is even more of a cope because you know that children who are obese aren't obese by accident. It's from their parents being negligent about their diets. So even children who are supposedly born with fatness aren't born with it. It's a result of their environment. Oh my god, that is so flattering on you! Is usually code for something that makes you appear slimmer. The goal of getting dressed should be about expression, not to appear smaller or fit to society's outdated, thin ideal. When we say that's flattering on you, we're saying, Oh my god, Stacy, 
you finally put on clothes that actually fit you. You're no longer squeezing yourself into skinny jeans that you'll never ever have the chance to wear again because you're 250 pounds. I'm saying that you look flattering not because I'm trying to say that you appear slimmer, but to say you finally listened to me when I told you to not wear floral patterns. I'm saying that you're flattering because I really, really don't want to hurt your feelings right now, and it's really cringe when you cry about your body because everybody in the household right now has been telling you how obese you are and you weren't trying to listen. And let me make this clear, the answer to every can I still get in better shape at some age question is always yes. Fat can always be lost. Muscle can always be gained or maintained. Strength and fitness levels can always be improved as can overall health in general. No matter how old you are, there's always something you can do to make your body look, feel, and function better than it currently does. And on top of that, there's always something you can do to make your body look, feel, and function better in the future than otherwise would be if you didn't start making the effort right now. So that's two different levels of meaningful progress that you can always make. I wanted to include this post for some of my older viewers who are interested in losing weight at like 45, 50 years old. I wanted to make sure that you guys know that you could do it. Trust me, it's not going to be as easy as it was when you were 20, but it's very possible. Are you following and learning from people in larger bodies, or are you learning solely from people in smaller bodies? If so, ask yourself why that is. Okay, uh, so now I gotta make my learning intersectional now? I can't learn my mathematics from a skinny woman, it has to be from a fat woman. And uh oh my bad, and that fat woman has to be a minority, who's also trans, and they have to be a Muslim too, and just a cherry on top, both of their parents have to be Jewish. Does, is that is that enough for you? Despite weighing 490 pounds, Sarah insists she eats mostly salads, and that her size is mainly due to a quote-unquote thyroid condition. Let's see how true that is. I love salad. I can eat all day, she said. I also like barbecue chicken and barbecue pork chops. I love macaroni and cheese, and I love rice too. I'm not much of a sweet eater, but I do like big cakes. What's up everybody, it's your boy Aileris, aka Panda Daddy, and I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, let me know in the comments down below, and leave a like if you liked the video, and if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe fam, what you doing watching videos and not subscribing, if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you get these notifications every time. R slash fat logic, that's a, that's a solid way to start a week, huh? Yeah, I'm going to try to produce a little bit more content this week because a lot of you guys wanted some specific stuff and I finally got a little bit of that together. And quick update on the video about Cuties and Netflix. You're going to get another update on that very soon. There's a lot of interesting developments in that story and I really want to share that with you because for some reason that movie is still going to be produced and sent out by September 9th. And we need to do something about that. And as always, we got to thank the Patreon supporters. So thank you to Taki, Bunny Boo, Dustin, Canned Eggplant, Kyle, Hostmar, Keith Myers, Hannah, Pixie Art 5, Lil Ring Green, Kat Catherine Taylor, Jason, Arolina, Rajan, Clara, John Robinson, Ethan, Vermont, Noobslur, Trenton Golden, Trojan, Yeetmaster, Arjen, Noah, Brody, Muffy Lou Who, Cleric, Sir Teacup, Immortal EXE, and Trey. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And as always, stay zesty.